my father bought the business from uh, James Powell for a hundred pounds for two horses and tip drays. Back 50, what, 50 years? That's when I came and joined my father. The industrial awakening of Australia has never been more rapid and spectacular than the present growth in the western half of the nation. The action is big, the projects massive beyond imagination, and the urgency for construction and transport to match the country's natural resources immediate. The need is for men who think big, who can match their growth with that of the state. This is the story of such a group of men and the company they have built in less than a lifetime. From horses and greys to an industrial giant with a workforce of 1150 and nearly a thousand vehicles. This is the story of Bell Brothers of Guildford. At their headquarters, just eight miles east of Perth, the indicator boards in the dispatch yard tell of operations diversified over the whole of Western Australia. In the sprawling, harsh northwest of the continent, a thousand miles north of Perth is Port Hedland. A few years ago, a sleepy subtropical outpost. But today, the base for at least a dozen major industrial and civil engineering projects. Signs of the old town still remain. But the new port is emerging daily, a modern planned centre of four and a half thousand people, with housing designed to make living comfortable in an uncomfortable land. And here is Bell Brothers' northern headquarters, controlling 250 men and combining the many facets of the company's operations, transport, earth-moving, civil engineering, all vital to the rapid and efficient development of Headland, one of the fastest growing centres in Australia and future metropolis of the north. The road trains based here travel 2,000 dusty red miles every week. And it is in the scorched redness of the landscape that the future of Port Hedland and the north lies. For the red that stains the rocks and mountains is iron ore, millions of tonnes of it, spelling untold wealth and development for years to come. Western Australia's annual production rate of iron ore is in excess of 15 million tonnes and that is only a beginning. Bell Brothers subcontract to resident companies and other contractors in the area. This cab and chassis of a giant haul packed dumper being loaded at Port Hedland Wharf is bound for Mount Newman, 300 miles inland. One of the major construction jobs currently based at Port Hedland is the Mount Newman Railway. 265 miles of track snaking its way across the desert to the Mount Newman mine, which produces millions of tons of iron ore every year. Rate of construction on the line is more than one completed mile per day, so this stockpile of rails will soon disappear. The American Leslie Salt Company is one of several overseas interests with operations based in the Headland area. And Bell Brothers is an important part of that operation. Here, giant crystallizing ponds for the production of crude salt are being hewn out of tidal flats and salt marsh, a major civil construction contract for Bell Brothers. these ponds extends for 80 acres and from the 10 ponds at present in operation Leslie Salt Transport to the Far East for refining a million tons of crude salt annually. With exports of this magnitude Western Australia could easily become the major supplier of salt to Japan and the Far East in the 70s. 250 miles southeast of Port Hedland is Mineral Claim 487, another of Bell Brothers northern projects. This 
is a manganese mine. And on the floor of the open cut, 140 feet below the surface, Men like Jack Dolan toil in temperatures which can reach 120 degrees. It's tough. But the hard-won ore is another vital, valuable ingredient to be added to all the others in this region of untold mineral wealth. But there are compensations for life here. Ask Jack Dolan why he stays, and he says... Oh, mainly for the money, that's the main reason. Between about 140 and 170 odd dollars a week, depending on the uh, actual amount of trucks I get in after hours bank approximately between 80 and 100 dollars a week. Start at 6.30 in the morning and I finish loading trucks at 9 o'clock at night and on standby seven days a week. It's a man's country, rugged, tough and uninviting. Yet for some women, it's home. Women like Jack Dolan's wife and their children who live here with him in this rich but thirsty land. The men can acclimatise, but the women... I don't even know how to get out of the country. I like it that much sometimes. But uh, eventually I suppose we'll have to make Margaret happy, get her back to the city. Mighty road trains carrying 60 tonnes of manganese per load transport nearly 80,000 tonnes of the rich ore from this mine to Port Hedland every year. From the port it is shipped to Japan where it is used in the manufacture of high-grade steel. It's a long, rough haul from Mineral Claim 487 to Headland, but the rewards for these blackened nights of the road are high. You drive 12 hours per day, and then you snatch a few hours precious sleep on the roadside. Many of these men are averaging $140 a week in wages, and their meals are free. Bell Brothers serve 450 meals a day in this camp dining room, and the food is good. And after dinner, if you're off duty, you can relax amid the night life of the port. Approximately 150 miles inland from Port Hedland is Quarry 5, one of several quarries established by Bell Brothers during the construction of the Mount Newman Railway. These quarries produced in all nearly half a million cubic yards of ballast for the line, the largest privately owned railway in Australia and part of the biggest mineral development in the nation. Apart from the laying of the track over normal terrain, the construction of the railway, 265 miles long, involved the construction of 25 bridges up to 700 feet in length. Nine million cubic yards of rock and earth had to be moved to lay nearly a million sleepers and 62,000 tonnes of Australian-made rail. Present contracts provide for 146 million tonnes of iron ore, 
to be hauled along the mighty steel sinew from Mount Whaleback to Port Hedland. This is part of Bell Brothers' contribution to the project. The giant shovel scouts their way into the rocky hillside to swiftly fill the waiting dump trucks. These then disgorge their loads into the primary crusher. From here, the broken rock is mechanically fed to the huge surge pile. It is then screened and passed through to the secondary crusher, from which it emerges as graded ballast and fine aggregate. The construction of the Mount Newman Railway consumed in all over a million cubic yards of ballast, half of it produced by Bell Brothers. Let us travel now across country through the Whippenham Gorge to the Hammersley Line and Bell Brothers Camp 171. This camp produces ballast for the maintenance of the Hammersley line and aggregate for the many construction jobs in the nearby Hammersley mining township of Mount Tom Price. A modern urban oasis built by private enterprise to make gracious living in what was a few years ago an arid hinterland. Building activity in the town is still at a peak. The iron ore won from Mount Tom Price is transported by train to the coastal railhead of Dampier, where it is further processed and to speed the operation, an important loop line is being constructed close to the township. Once again, Bell Brothers is on the job, utilising some of their heaviest equipment such as scrapers with a capacity of 24 cubic yards at one bite. The scrapers are assisted in their task by giant dozers. Although the main Hammersley line to Dampier has been in operation for some time, there is still work to be done, and closer to the coastal railhead, reinforcement of and regrading of the embankments and extension of the culverts is in full swing. Another contract won by Bell Brothers, involving the use on site of $2 million worth of equipment. To complete the operation, 900,000 cubic yards of earth must be moved and compacted against the existing embankments a task for eight of the gigantic scrapers and the powerful dozers. A tough job where an error of judgment can be dangerous, as veteran worker Spud Murphy says. If you turn your machine too sharp, she'll nose dive when she goes into the bank. And uh, then if you, if you don't think the right way and turn the right way, she'll roll over. There's a lot of things you've got to learn, you know. But uh, to drive it, it's all right. Um, kids can drive them. But to operate them, such a good thing. Here the work is so heavy that it takes two dozers to fill one of the big scrapers. The fresh earth is compacted by these 12-ton vibrating sheep's foot rollers. This massive task was completed in record time by the company. In future months, this steel highway will carry iron ore sufficient to produce metallized agglomerates in nearby Dampier at the rate of one million tonnes a year. Nearly 200 miles southwest of Headland and 800 miles from Perth, headquarters for this sector of Bell Brothers operations is the port of Dampier, newly created by Hammersley Iron Proprietor Limited. At the present time, Dampier is a company town with a growing population in excess of 2,000 people and more than 300 new brick homes overlooking a harbour capable of taking 100,000 tonne ore carriers.
At the Bell Brothers depot, local contract work is carried out, including the widening of portion of the main line to Mount Tom Price. This rubber-tied loader has a scoop capacity of five cubic yards. About 70 miles off the coast from Dampier, Barrow Island is the northwest base for West Australian Petroleum. The field produces 30,000 barrels of crude oil each day and drilling is still proceeding. Barrow Island is still Australia's biggest producing oil field and is part of the giant sedimentary basin in the West Australian continental shelf. A $15 million plan is underway on the island to drill 208 injection wells and pump salt water into them. This water will force the oil to the surface. Here, Bell Brothers is involved in the construction of Wappert's first water flood station, 